part doesn't belong. <laughs> okay. Well, we're back with a beetle, and um, uh, I'm going to do some seat belts on that. What? You're not going to use the original 1967 uh, one year only clamshell seat belts? Um, no. <laughs> Two reasons. Uh, I don't have six bills to lay out for a set of original seat belts. Uh, these were free, can't beat free. And uh, these are three points, where the clamshells were two points. Uh, they had made um, in the B pillar holes and tapped them, but they put these in there instead of uh, making a second point uh, or a third point. And uh, Volkswagen was thinking, uh, and they were coming up with changes and stuff, but this car originally just had lap belts. So we're going to make a three-point free. And these seat belts here, they look horrible, but they're still made out of the same seat beltium that the clamshell ones were. So they'll, they'll work just as well. So let's get these sorted and see if they work. I've laid these all out and uh, as you can see this would probably be uh, mm, passenger side I would think yes passenger side and what you want to know is you want to pull up on this really quick and see if it snaps in place and then let it drop well all that stuff wipes off you know so but what you want is a seat belt that's going to grab so when you get in a, in a panic situation, it grabs, but you can adjust it how you want. Now, you hear that noise in there? Okay. Don't take these apart and oil them. If they don't work, get another pair. The reason being is if you oil them inside, they'll attract dirt. And dirt uh, and stuff like they need to be really dry. You might be able to use a little... Uh, graphite, but don't use, uh, I wouldn't oil them. I just wouldn't. Uh, these had some uh, wires attached to them, and I cut them off. That mess, see that mess? I might, get, I might get some graphite in there on that. We'll see. But it still holds. Not if I can get it back down. There it is. Okay. <clears throat> Another thing you want to check is you want to check these and make sure they plug in. Now these you can oil. Works. Works. Good. These had some wires on them that I cut off and they were from a Seventy-two Beetle. Uh, this particular car, I believe, was a Super Duper as well, and uh, it has warning buzzer lights and stuff like that. If you don't have your seat belts on, that's what the wires are for. But I don't care about those. Um, one other thing you want to look for is you want to make sure your seat belts are not rotten or frayed. And uh, after fifty years, Volkswagen did a wonderful job with these, sewing them. They used excellent thread, excellent material, and they're not, not rotten. Okay, so, so we can proceed with cleaning them up and putting them in the car. And again, now I'm going to have a three-point harness instead of a two-point harness. And the car was uh, fit with holes for a three-point harness. They just hadn't got that all figured out yet, I believe. Important to have the correct bolts and it's important to have the correct washers. Okay, you should have six bolts for eight holes because this is going to loop back through to the bottom of the seat belt. Okay, and this is going to swing in this way because you have the correct bolt in it with the little collar 
and you want a nylon washer and another nylon washer to act as a swivel. And then this is, that, is the washer that tightens up against it and it allows this free movement. And uh, uh, these are the same. It allows them free movement as well. Uh, the, the pivot point. It allows that free movement as well. Um, the, uh, the end part, they just had a bolt. Okay, no collar. If you put a collared bolt in there, these move all around like that. But they're not supposed to. They have teeth that hold them in place. And uh, that's supposed to go through just like that. Don't know if there's a washer on there. Supposed to be a washer on there. I don't think so. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It doesn't look like it needs one because it's got a little collared washer built onto it. Uh, I was very fastidious about uh, pulling these apart. And I got the parts all of the parts and I was very careful to keep them also. Uh, I, I do have the covers uh, for the corners or uh, for the you know point that mounts on the uh, uh, on the uh, B pillar and I also have the points or the covers that mount uh, on the bolts right there. So we'll clean those up and we'll use all this stuff. And it should fit just fine. Car hasn't changed. Holes haven't changed. It should work. I had to drill a hole for this pin to go through because the original ones didn't have that probably. And uh, these are capped and obvious. Uh, if you notice how it's bent, the bolt is going to go in this way. And then, of course, the bolt is going to go in this way on this. So what that will do is it will straighten everything up and I'll show you exactly. So let's find let's find our hole right there and we'll cut a hole in our uh, vinyl and screw it up really good. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Uh, we'll cut a hole in our vinyl there for the mounting point and then once we get the, this mounted we'll come back to this and we'll Put all the washers in there. Okay, we use the medium sized bolt. There's a long bolt that goes to the bottom. The medium one goes here, and both of these are collared. They have a collar, and then the one goes on the deal down there is just a small regular machine bolt, doesn't have a collar on it. And if you have your your, your washers in there right, this is tightened up and it will move and not be real sloppy. So, okay, let's uh, work on this piece down here. Okay, you've got easy movement there. You've got easy movement here. And this is how this should go when you clip it in place. Because this portion will lay flat over your waist and then this portion here will go up against your chest and there isn't any twist. Now it looks kind of it looks kind of twisted when you put it up like that, but it's correct. That, that's, that's the correct way. It have to be. Unless this went on the other side, and I know it didn't. And it didn't because it has a little curve here, and they didn't change the body. They didn't change the body. They just made parts for it. They might have punched another hole, but they didn't, you know, change the, the body. So I know this is correct. Okay, so let's get our, uh, find our hole wherever it might be here, and uh, we'll get that piece in there with, uh, yep, with this bolt right here. The one that goes, the one that goes on this side is the one that's always damaged. <laughs> I 
Uh, it works. There's two springs in there, but one of my springs is missing. The, um, the little serrated edges goes up against there like so. And then you put the bolt in it. So you can see how this would go across your chest. It's not twisted. And this would go across your lap. like that and it's in it like that and it's not twisted uh, caps that I got off the other car uh, fit just fine work fine again we're loose there we're loose there this is important because this is what's going to hold you in place in the event that, it, that you crash so you can't fudge this stuff the springs a little weak on that but but I'm happy. There, seat belts. One anyways. Okay, let's work up the other one. Well, there you go. Uh, looks like the spring on this one's a little weak too. That's all right with me. Free is free. So should be okay. Um, like like I said before, the bolts should be tight, but the uh, should be loose. So so it, it swings, you know. There you go. And uh, when you pick up on that, when you get into a panic situation, that should lock. Just like that. So you don't so you don't go you know, forward into the glass. So, there you go. Three-point harness. A uh, lot to be said about a three-point harness. I'll tell you what. Uh, automotive manufacturers are still using them today. Although they are incorporating them with airbags. Which I have mixed feelings on. I think that just adds a lot of cost to the car. Um, yeah, you know. I mean, your little wife in the front of the car and hit, gets hit by an airbag and dies. And these airbags that are blowing off a bunch of metal and st It's, yeah. Three-point harness, man, that's the way to go right there. Uh, wish they were white. Hey, let's spray paint them white. No, let's not. But there you go. And now for something completely different. Gentlemen, I present to you rifle porn. Okay, um... These three rifles uh, represent rifles I remember as a child, and um, they were my father's, and I inherited them from my father, uh, thankfully uh, from my um, uh, very generous siblings. Uh, they let me have these three. Uh, so I want to explain some stuff to you, but first, uh, uh, we need to examine and make sure all magazines are empty. That doesn't stay open. Aha! I knew that would do it. Good, I wanted that to happen. Wanted that to happen. Excellent. Okay, uh, they're all empty and we're going to look at this because this is the reason why I have this rifle out is because I went shooting with a friend of mine and I thought it would be a good idea to uh, bring out one of these rifles and, uh, and shoot it or a couple of them and shoot them. So I went out to the range and uh, I brought this and uh, this and this are 1953 models and uh, Brian, you can help me out here. I think Dad didn't give only $50 brand new from them uh, from Sears or something like that. Bought them from Sears. Uh, this one had the sights taken off and a Williams scope mount put on it with a, a Weaver scope. Uh, not a Chinese scope, not a, not a cheap thing at the time. Uh, very, in a, or very expensive. And... Uh, the thing about this gun and this gun is they both have a, uh, a Williams scope mount on them 
And in the paperwork that, that uh, I have uh, that was in these cases, there's a little card, and the card said, if you put it on the Model 63, then uh, it's, you know, uh, it's set for the 63. If you put it on the 1894, uh, uh, then you're five clicks up and three clicks over. And so I didn't know which scope fit what, so I put uh, the scope on what I thought would be uh, the one he would be shooting the most, and that would be the 22 because these are a dollar a round. Um, whereas 22 shells are pretty inexpensive. Uh, I put this scope on this rifle and uh, thank you dad, it was dead on. Right, right on the money. You could just pick off the ducks down at the shooting gallery. The metal ducks that is. However, uh, this gun, like all of his guns, uh, had some sort of flaw. <laughs> That's what we're going to address with this one. And uh, the flaw, I believe, is the extreme high cost, and I'm being facetious, of gun oil. You know, a quart of oil for all your guns for the entire, your entire life uh, is far too much. <laughs> so, uh, run them dry. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's what I think will happen to this one because as it, uh, as it goes back into battery and fires, uh, particles come out of this uh, gun and if you look at the casing it has uh, blow by on it so it's not it's not closing fully whether it's war or not it also jams now and again unless it's really wet so uh, oiled that is so it's an okay it's an okay rifle this is a 1953 model 63 Winchester semi-automatic a uh, very desirable rifle actually hard to find in that kind of condition this is a model 62 same year 53 and, uh, and this is a 22 pump. And they also made a 61, a Model 61, which was a hammerless uh, 22 Magnum, which is, which is, I'd like to have one of those. That's pretty neat. Uh, the lever, <laughs> this, is, this is another one of those flaws. Okay, this is another one of those things. My, uh, my father traded this for something. I can't remember what. Uh, but this rifle is chain, chambered in uh, 32... Uh, 32 special, which is a necked up 3030. Uh, they're about a dollar around unless you re, uh, re, you know, do your own. So uh, shorter barrel carbine, and uh, and uh, the lever is uh, is not as smooth as you would like it to be, uh, but it is in very good shape. 1949. Uh, year uh, 1894 Winchester lever, okay, in uh, 32 special. Uh, yeah, just a wacky cartridge. So uh, I wanted to get out these and show you these that I inherited from my uh, father. Uh, thank you for my gracious brothers for letting me uh, have them. I, I consider this to be just a loan. Um, I, I, um, they're going to go all back into the collection wherever it may, might be. Uh, if I die, they're going to wherever the, those others went to. So, uh, so I want to address this, and that is, I was out shooting it the other day, and the, uh, yeah, and so uh, I also have some paperwork that says uh, that he had uh, that he had bought a screw or two or something uh, for the slide mechanism on this. So uh, what I need to do is I need to find out what's going on here. Obviously they're stripped. Uh, I'm thinking some JB Weld, but if I look at this already, it has JB Weld in it. <laughs> so uh, we need to look at that and see if we can't make that work. For a little bit anyways. Uh, what's the right thing to do? Buy new screws and get this piece. I'm not a millionaire and you're not going to be able to find stuff like that. Or, or you might be able to, or have somebody weld it up and retap them, or, 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 or. A little JB Weld, I think, will work for a little while. Let's see if we can't fix it. I know, Brian, you're rolling over in your grave, JB Weld. Oh, God. To say, Dad is rolling over in his grave, not Brian's still very much alive. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, let's get to that. There you go. My father was always outside 
uh, if he wasn't tromping through, if he wasn't tromping through uh, cornfields, he was fishing. He was in a nice ice shanty fishing, or some some sort of fishing. Um, he always thought that us kids were going to be the great white hunters, and uh, we we never turned out to be that. Uh, except maybe one. <laughs> uh, the youngest I would consider the, the, the one who hunts the most and such. Uh, but Brian and I, we don't hunt at all. Uh, I have, I, 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 I can't speak for him, but I, I, I don't think he does. But um, yeah, you can see a little better. The uh, whole situation with that was, is uh, <laughs> Dad thought he was going to get hunters out of all of us and uh, he didn't and he would uh, drag us along all the time uh, and uh, when we was kids uh, we took our hunter safety all of us and my father told me when I was 12 that I would be able to shoot all the ammunition that I could buy which was moot because I couldn't buy any <laughs> so I was I was happy with my uh, my little uh, uh, Daisy BB gun uh, because the ammo for it was relatively cheap uh, but that being said uh, later on I was able to to, uh, to uh, afford ammunition and uh, I was able to go shooting and it wasn't uncommon let me back this up a little bit it wasn't uncommon for us to uh, walk down the street with a rifle or a shotgun. Uh, it, it just was a, a completely different time. Uh, I remember uh, my brother would have the uh, uh, forearm section of this rifle up his sleeve, and my father would have the other section up his sleeve, the stock and receiver up his sleeve. And they would go back to uh, a woods, and I would go back with them every once in a while, you know, get, get out from mom's underneath the mom, and go out there. And the deal is, is uh, Tisdale's Woods was, I, I believe Mr. Tisdale sold it to the uh, high school. And so the high, that was high school property. And, uh, you know, you take a rifle, it was even back then, you didn't want to take a rifle in town back into a woods. And uh, Dad would have 22 shorts, and we would shoot squirrels out of those trees. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. It was right in town, but there was big, big trees, and no one seemed to no one seemed to mind or care, you know. And that's that's what we did. Yeah. So that's where they were when they were kids. So okay, um, I've tried to get these screws out. I don't know if you see these. Uh, but the problem is, is they do not want to come out of there. Uh, ideally, it would be to take those out and uh, re-thread another bolt in there, but they're pressed in there in such a way, and I don't want to booger that. That's already boogered up, uh, not for me, uh, probably for my father trying to make them work, because there's already JV Weld in there. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, I'm going to uh, do the same thing. I'm going to put some JB Weld in there and hopefully that will uh, solve it, the problem and, and put those back into the holes, screw them back into the holes and then uh, hopefully that will work. We'll see. Let's get some JB Weld mixed up and try that. Other than that it's a gunsmith. so. So I've been raised around guns all my life. Uh, you know, so it's, you know, it's as common as crabgrass, you know. Uh, having a pistol in my pocket is just, it's just like putting my wallet in my pocket. You know, it's, it's normal, for me anyways. Um, my father never told me about tyrannical governments or anything like that. I think he just liked the outdoors and he liked shooting and he liked hunting. He just liked it. And that's where we got it from. We didn't know anything about governments. And, well, we, you know, 
it was it was breezed over for, from us, uh, you know, in civics, <laughs> and that's about it. So everybody uh, deer hunted. Uh, a lot of kids had rifles in their in their cars, in their trucks. It wasn't it wasn't a big deal. So, anyways. So a, a lot of people uh, have a, a death fear of guns, and 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 uh, they all think they're terrible, and it goes on and on and on like that. And that is what's been taught to them by uh, oh, by Hollywood, you know. So I'm sorry for you about that because uh, it's really not how it is. See if we can't get a get in there. Now I'm gonna slide this down. This one does anyways. Let me try to, I'm going to have to pry these screws up a little bit and then I'll be able to slide that back in there. Okay, I've managed to get that. There, that one dropped down in there. I'll give it a few turns and see if I can't catch some of that. Hopefully I don't glue the receiver shut. Or glue, <laughs> glue it open rather. Yeah, they're just that those screws are just not hooking up on there. So, you know, what we'll have to do is hope hopeful hope for the best and see if the JB well doesn't work. It looks like it worked once before. So, you know, I'm really not doing any harm because somebody has done that before, more than likely, Dad. Uh many, many moons ago. Uh and I have a, a piece of paper that shows where he had ordered one of those screws. That's why it's all boogered up around there. Uh, so weak point there, I guess, on that uh, Model 62 rifle. So let's let that set, and we'll see how the action works uh, in a little while. Well, a day, two days, something like that. I let it set overnight. Uh, it's been probably, oh, probably 30 hours since I worked on it. So let's have a look at this and see how she works. Uh, she should work all right. Uh, the screws aren't moving anymore as they were. It's not. It's 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 loose, but it's it's not loose. It's the word I'm looking for. It's not loose. It's not loose. It's not loose here. It's loose back here. You can see the slop right there. In fact, I wonder if this screw's tight enough. This moves around a bit. Probably ought to examine that too. But it's not moving on the uh, slide or the ejector. Everything seems to be okay. It's just that this thing has, you know, this thing's had 10,000 rounds put through it. Oh, 5,000 just from me. So. <laughs> So, you know, uh, things are going to be a little sloppy. I'll have a look at that before we go shoot it, and we'll go shoot it here uh, in a little bit. Uh, I want to show you something else I got. I got these from Rock Auto. Uh, evidently, they're made in Italy uh, because it says Fragili on it. Uh, so let's have a look. This is part of... Uh, bringing your your stash or your supply up to date, and uh, I, I wanted to do this on my supply, 
uh, because uh, when I was looking for these, I couldn't. I, I found just enough. Well, just enough was just enough, but still, you need to replenish your supply. And I've got these through Rock Auto. And uh, Rock Auto had these. <clears throat> now, you can buy cheaper ones uh, also. And uh, they are... I want to say 15 cents a piece and these were 22 cents a piece. Now, what's the difference between these and, and the cheaper ones? Well, uh, these are made in China, of course, but they're made through Hella. So they have a little bit more quality control, uh, I like to think anyways. And, you know, you're spending six cents more a bulb. So I got these shipped to my house for 22 cents a piece. They do look quite uh, stout, uh, quite nice, quite nicely made. If you look at the filaments and stuff inside, they're not uh, all raggedy and cheesy like the ones you'd find down to AutoZone. And uh, it's got a little wear mark in the glass. They, you know, they don't look uh, cheesy and cheap. The filaments inside, uh, 1156 and 1157, very common. The solders on the bottom aren't blobby and smeared. They, they're quite, uh, the quality is quite nice. Although they are not German, they are hella. 22 cents a piece. Um, so that brings 10 bulbs, $2.20, 230 or something like that. And I paid $3 for shipping for both of these. So still, I am well under the $10 a box for the cheap, crappy, wacky-looking filament, blobby soldered uh, boxes that O'Reilly has sold. Rock Auto, man. Rock Auto. That's great to be able to buy stuff like that and have stuff uh, and quality stuff shipped to your door in a day or two. And, uh, and cheap. Let's go shoot that. Well, we're out to the gun club and uh, I've got the Model 62 and because uh, I don't see very good we're going to shoot at these targets here. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll tink at the gong and then uh, we will uh, try the uh, wolves and then we'll try to uh, pop the, uh, I don't know what those are, I think they're chickens back and forth at the little shooting gallery here. So let's get her loaded up and, uh, and we'll see what we can do here. I got a shooting out here with a buddy of mine. Black Friday, no one's here. So, I'll show you how this machine loads up. Oh, gotta wait for Chris. <laughs> We're being as safe as we can, so we don't handle guns or ammunition when someone's downwind. So, I think this holds 10 or 11, and uh, just go in that little tube magazine like that. That's three. Oop. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. More than I thought. 12, 13, 14, 14, what do you know what about that? 14. So, and what you do is you drop it off a safe, rack one in there, get back on safe, and you can pull a hammer back to shoot the first one. So let's 
see if I can hit anything out there. Spin these backwards the other way. I got one more, I think. Nope, I'm out. Well, there you go. Shoots like a house of fire. <laughs> Pretty good. And uh, it run through all of them, didn't jam. Ejected nicely, and it's uh, still really on, uh, really on target. Fabulous. Okay. Thanks for coming out here and shooting with us. See you guys later.